All right, welcome back guys. So today we're gonna be mounting our Volt switch panel in our engine bay and running our wires. So stay tuned, keep watching and subscribe. So one of my buddies made this bracket for me or this mount uh, just in case you want to have the same dimensions it's ten and a quarter by six inches so ten and a quarter wide by yeah, ten and a quarter wide by ten and six six inches and a quarter actually this way so ten and a quarter six and a quarter and it's Four inches high just so you guys get an idea I already pre-drilled the holes and stuff like that so what I want to do first here is I'm going to want to mount this because it's going to be tougher to get the sh to the screws here uh, once it's in the engine bay so I am missing two more nuts uh, to make my my screws go in but all, you, all I really did was drill these holes I'm going to mount one diagonally from another I'm going to go ahead and also Add some Loctite to it, some blue one, just so if the because I only have two, the vibration won't make this fall off. So let's go ahead and mount the switch box first, and then we're gonna go ahead and mount the L bracket that we had custom made onto the vehicle, and I'll show you how to do that. Actually, one thing I did forget, we're gonna go ahead and take these off again. Uh, one thing I did forget that we do, we do this switch box does have a ground section. I don't know if we'll end up using, so I'll show you. Here's some, the ground is right here. So in order for us to use that ground, we have to put a cable to it. And the cable to it is underneath, let me show you. It's down here. So in order for us to, to make this uh, ground bus or yeah, ground bus work, Vol switch does provide a cable um, so you could ground it and probably ground it directly. So we're going to go ahead and run this already. So we're going to run it towards to this way. So we're going to actually unscrew this here. We're going to run it underneath because we're not going to run it through the top because it doesn't work like that so so we're gonna run we're gonna round our ground like this Now that we got our ground going this, now that we got our ground going this way, this will be active, and this will should make connection from the screw to here and all the way across. So now we can go ahead and put this back on. And that should secure our uh, switch box, give us enough room for the, the top. Uh, ground uh, bar and bus and yeah now we can mount it to our factory location bolts like I mentioned I'm gonna go ahead and later on get some more locking nuts for both sides so I'm gonna make sure that we get another one but for now let's go ahead and show you how we're gonna mount this <coughs> alright so we're gonna be mounting our uh, switch box panel and uh, bracket in this location we're gonna be using this hole here and this hole here these factory holes they're two different holes so um, just make sure that you have the right uh, bolts and stuff like that. Um, I just had some laying around so we're going to keep our diagnostic plug here. So we're going to go ahead and just remove this horn and then we're going to relocate it somewhere else. Uh, we want to put it somewhere where it's not going to be rattling. So either, either I'm just going to zip tie it to the harness that's down here uh, or right here. 
I'm just gonna zip tie it over here. Should be fine. Hopefully it doesn't hit our bracket, but we'll see. So that'll keep it from rattling. All right, so now we're gonna mount our system here. Our mount our bracket and gauge here. Nothing hits, this rests on top of the reservoir. Um, but it should be fine. If not, we could drop it down and go around, but it should be okay. So let's go ahead and use the bolts that I have laying around to mount these. Again, um, the factory holes, there's one size bigger than the other. Uh, they're not the same uh, ones. One's a much larger one than the other. Luckily, I had both, and I had both Allen wrenches, so you got to make sure that you have both sizes in order for it to work on this. Now that we have the correct Allen wrenches, we're going to go ahead and screw this onto here, drop it into place, and again we're utilizing, we're utilizing the factory holes here, and I, this should be plenty of, of holes, I mean this should hold it up, this should be able to hold it, I mean the bracket is heavy, but we should be fine. I'm going to put some Loctite over here. These are our Allen wrenches. Then do the other side. Once we get the other side, then we'll completely tighten it. Now, it's clear from here. So now, completely tighten it up. There, we're completely secure. This goes over it, but once we kind of twist it this way or go downwards, the power wire, I mean, it should, everything should clear the power steering uh, reservoir. So yeah, let's, uh, let's run our power on our ground, and then we'll go on, well, let's run our power ground, don't connect it, but then we'll run our, our lights and everything to each switch. By removing your uh, grill, you can have access to the wire loom that goes that runs underneath the, the front core support, and that you can use zip ties to run your cables underneath the bottom as well. So taking off your grill makes it a lot simple. Three screws, two little clips, and you're done. Okay, so we ran our power wire and grunt wire underneath the box. That's why I am. Screw that so we can run our fuse uh, underneath and we ran this cable through here and underneath the front core support zip tied to here then it's split from here here's the, the built-in fuse that it came with so this will go so built-in fuse that it came with and this is the power will go either here or here here's our main ground for the switch panel we could actually take this off go here and Call it a day, or I could run it to the main over here as well. Either or, or I could just connect it here, make it easier if I ever want to do like a quick disconnect of the system. I could do it directly from here, so that might be what we're going to do. So, next, uh, we're going to take all the zip tie, uh, cut all the zip ties, then we're going to start running our wires, our first um, lights to here, and that's going to be exciting. All right, so this is our light bar wire. As you can tell, there is a relay here and there's power and ground. We're not gonna need this relay no longer um, because this, uh, uh, the Voss uh, switch panel comes with its own fuses here. They're 40 amps, this is a 40 amp, so we know we, we're, we're good here. So what we're gonna do is just run power directly to uh, our channel that we need and then if we need and then run our ground over to the back side so sh should be pretty simple we're going to close this up um, so that we keep all the dust out of it for the time being 
once we're ready to connect it we will but um, because again this is this has um, a relay we don't need this relay but we do need the cord that goes from here to the light bar so what we're gonna do is cut this heat shrink and we're gonna try to use this all the wire that we can because obviously we're coming from the roof rack all the way across the bottom and over the engine bay um, here is uh, our power and ground that we need so what we're gonna do is expose it more and we're literally we're gonna cut it right to the edge of the plastic because we need this power and ground for our, for my light bar so you could even probably go a little step further but really if you cut it right to the edge we should be fine so or unless you want to be nice and reuse this prong I mean you could always get these prongs but we're not gonna need it anymore so what we're gonna do is cut our power wire source there our power wire from our light bar and then we're gonna go ahead and count the rest of this and we just need that so that releases that releases our um, relay and the cable that went to the original um, switch that uh, Rough Country provided so we don't need that no more and the, and the fuse so this is relay built-in relay built-in fuse so we should be good this I'm gonna hopefully try to get this to be my channel one I like my light bar as my channel one but if not um, we're gonna move it over to channel two or seven which is the bottom one um, so depending on if, if I could get this cable to completely you know give me enough length so I'm gonna zip tie it get it to the to here once I do that then we'll connect it and then we'll power it up so we could see what uh, number one looks like all right so now that we ran our wire and we need to run I would like to run this to switch number one which is our top button we could always switch it out so first and foremost we're gonna strip our our ground so, uh, before we do that we're gonna try to run it into here I shouldn't have stripped it yet should have waited They have these little plugs so you can run your ground and your oh, I guess I, I was able to. So it's just you only need power. So the again the ground goes to the back side. So we just need our ground and it looks like we're gonna have enough room to pick our switch so from the switch panel it's it's one through four up top one and four through sorry one through six up top and seven through uh 12 in the bottom so i want to put this on channel one i want to say i'm going to double check okay so we're gonna make sure you run your uh you put this in first like this and then you run it through your through your little cable hole you want to catch it up here the ground again we're not going to need it so this is going to just literally go like this and this will crimp it all together even though we, it has the other three rubber garments it won't allow dust or anything come in but you don't want to do that just yet because you don't want to hold it so what we're going to do here is run our or use our connect our connector and then put it on our power now we have our connector and we're going to need to we'll just pull a little bit out like that now we screw it down perfect again our ground will go to the back 
or underneath and then through the back or somewhere like that. If you connected this wire here to your accessory ignition, the system will only turn on if your ignition is on or your key is on. Uh, I don't want that one direct power, so I'm not, we will not be connecting this and I will be in the ignition control disable mode and there's switches here and the read your instructions, they'll let you know. So it's pretty simple. Also, there is a, a fuse alarm light too. So if the light inside here, you can't, you can't really see it, but fuse alarm light is over here. If it lights up, um, that means that obviously it noticed that there was a, a voltage drop. So it's sending an alarm or fuse alarm. So yeah, make sure that you know what fuses your LEDs or the light source or anything you're gonna be powering up. You know the uh, fuse size. If the fuse size is smaller than the 30 that they provide here, um, note that you're gonna to have to replace that. So if it's a, originally a 10 uh, amp fuse, that you're gonna to have to replace the 30 with the amp to the correct um, switch location that you put it in. So just make sure you don't wanna be able, you don't wanna you know, destroy or, or you know, burn out your LEDs or anything like that, whatever you're running. So make sure you know what amp uh, fuse you need uh, correctly for your uh, light or light bars or whatever you're running, refrigerator, anything like that. So, yeah. Now let's just connect our power and we should be good. So let's see if it works. One thing we do have to worry about is this. I'm gonna probably put some tape over it so that if the hood closes, it doesn't ground it or anything else touches it on the frame or anywhere it grounds it. So we're gonna put, uh, look for a cover for this. If not, then put some tape, electric tape around it. But we're all set here. Okay, so now that we installed our light bar to our Vox switch panel, I'm gonna show you how um, the, the cool settings about this um, switch panel. So there is a way you could uh, change the, how it lights up, either solid light or it sputters there's about four or five different settings i'm going to show you all the settings and there is another up and down volume so high and low i i don't have use for that but that's an option as well but let me show you how you could program it to change colors the the display color and then how to change the setting on how the light um functions as well so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the switch panel and automatically this by pressing the center button here, it powers up the system, the display, and the switch panel. Okay, I'm going to first show you is how to change the color. I'm not going to go with green. My in display in the car is green, but let me show you how you can change it. So you're going to want to do is make sure that the, the switch panel is off, and you're going to hold down the, the power button for three seconds. And now it's in program mode. If you want to change the color, you press the center again. Then you got blue which is pretty neat. You got white. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's white. You got red and you got green. So you got one, two, three, four colors. I'm going to go ahead and set it at white because I like it's cool white. I'm going to hold down. I know there's a way to also change the brightness on it. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six how to change the brightness but there's a way to change the oh there you go you have to press down so you could change the brightness um, but we're going to keep it as bright as possible and then when you're ready when you're done you just hold down the power button for three seconds and now you're set to so changing the light setting uh, you want to do is make sure that the unit is on you're going to do is hold down the power button again three seconds and now it's in um, mode to program so now you're going to press the channel that you want to program right now we have channel one which we are strobe light so as you guys can see that is just straight solid next would be this function here 
so it, it pulses once third one it's like a turn signal fourth one it gets a little faster and a little sputter right next one after that and then back to solid program it where it's completely solid you could just go ahead and save it there but let's just say that you wanted to go with a uh, let's just say blink let's say that one so let's just say let no not that one let's say that one right so now we're gonna do is go ahead and press the power now we got it with the cool part a cool feature about this if we just go ahead and press our channel one it'll light up if we double tap it sorry if we double it'll do it so it'll remember to do that feature so that's pretty cool you could go ahead and still have your single light function like that but if you double tap it instead you got that that sputter so that's really cool feature let's just say let's just say you're stuck in the middle of of the woods and you want to get somebody's attention and you want it to be able to have that function where you just press it instead of having to go to program it you, you already have it programmed so you press it once it'll give you the solid light if you press it if you double tap it it'll give you the the next feature that you chose either sputtering uh tick tock or or talk or back and forth so it's a great feature awesome so we're going to go ahead and put our first sticker on here now let me show you all the stickers but um, I'm eventually going to the, fill these all in and then uh, we'll go from there. But let's put on our first LED, I mean our first sticker that indicates our channel 1. Okay, so the kit comes, like I mentioned, with all these light uh, stickers. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and put our rooftop LED, which is this one right here. They're, they do have another one that is that one right there, but I don't like it because it has round lights. This one right here. So, I mean, you could always go like a, like a front as well, but I think that I could see that more of a bumper, this rear and the dust. I think the dust one would be like a chase light and we'll go ahead and connect that later. <coughs> but for now, I think I'm gonna do the roof uh, switch here uh, and put that on there. Um, but yeah, one more feature that they do have is a, a setting a master switch. The master switch, I'm not gonna, I don't need it, but what you could do is set up multiple uh, channels or switches to light up with one switch so let's just say I had channel <coughs> channel one is the master switch so that turns on everything but I could connect or I can make channel two and seven go off at turn on at the same time and turn off so let's just say I have multiple um, I don't know let's say area lightings that I want to come at the same time so if I don't want to go ahead and press all the buttons uh, like one two three four to light them all up you could actually set it where if you press one that's a master switch and it turns on all the the <coughs> the buttons or the switches that you dedicated to the master switch so let's just say i want to make sure that all the area lighting wants to come on when i press one they all come on when i press one again to turn it off they all turn off so you could do a master switch like that or you could go individual setting one two three and four for example but it's all good it's another great feature about this uh, kit too maybe I'll show you guys in a near video but one last feature also you could do is you could disable the low voltage cutoff if needed so you have this little switch right here you could adjust it read the instructions uh, very detailed instructions on this kit as well um, really enjoyed it uh, made it very simple um, even the customer service through Instagram was perfect uh, but yeah you so many features so many instructions, detailed instructions on how to use it and where to use it and how to install it. And even, again, even a diagram, even these, man, big shout outs to them. We're gonna go ahead and grab our roof light sticker. Just like that. And then we're gonna, actually I wanna turn it on so I can see it we're gonna go ahead and set it over just like so completely off once you press it and it turns red it means your light is on so just in case you have um, 
chase lights in the back and you don't believe they're on on the daytime it'll indicate it so <laughs> and then if you have it off you're good again you could you could dim this switch as well so it's not so bright if you wanted to again switch the color you can turn it off hold it down just like that and then you could change the color red green and you could always dim it too so that so it's not so bright blue blue's pretty neat and then white kind of like the, I like the white the best but hold it down again for three seconds and there you have it so power on this indicates that there's power to the system you're good to go um, eventually I'm gonna go ahead and do all the installations of the, my rest of my lights I want to say I have about six to eight six to seven lights so I'm gonna go ahead and probably put the light indication stickers on and then go from there hope you guys enjoyed this uh, installation of the Voss switch uh, 12 gang switch panel on my 98 Land Cruiser if you missed out on the rest of the unboxing and also the installation of the switch panel I'll put it at the end of this video you guys can watch it and I also have a playlist as well big shout outs to them for sending me one of this and so I could try it install it and enjoy it uh, this, it's very affordable compared to like the high-end ones I even want to say that I love this one much better than those this one fits perfect it's 12 instead of 6 and 8 uh, or 4 and yeah 6 and 8 um, for the price it's great and the installation was super easy um, and yeah i mean looking forward to enjoying this uh and using it for looking forward to using it and enjoying it uh on all my adventures so big shout outs to them if you're looking to purchase one you could click and pick one up on my amazon store on the link below uh yeah catch you on the next one